Okay, I'm gonna finish this apple. I better hurry up. Let's see, let me paint this baby. When you paint along this dark, you wanna make it one stroke or you're gonna get it muddy. So now let me see what I wanna do is I wanna put my darks in of that apple. I'm gonna put it in here. Going into that burnt umber. I'm gonna put in the core shadow going along the shape of the apple. I think I'll put a little blue in there. I like blue and this is a nice combination. And what else do I need? I need my stem. Notice how I keep looking for my darks. Reach up here and a nice beautiful stroke with those darks. And that's what the quality brush is doing for you. Uh, okay, oh, you know what I missed? I wanna show you is I like to go around the edge of this apple with the dark. Let me go to a better dark on there and come around the edge. You know what, that's drawing the edge of the apple. I like that part. Okay, right now I've got my cad yellow. Remember, I put the gel in it. So I'm gonna dip, be dipping into that gel and that'll make it nice and rich. Oh, I don't need the oil, I've already got the gel. So let's go over here and I'm gonna throw in some yellow. Remember, try to let the, the strokes live. This is called indirect painting that we're doing. We're actually painting wet into wet. And sometimes people think they have to wait for a painting to dry, but you don't. You can't get these beautiful, rich strokes if you let your painting dry. So you can work wet into wet. Let me try this stroke. Ooh, nice. I like it. Let's see what we can do back here. I'm gonna throw a little red in that background just for excitement. It's like a little bit of excitement going on. Okay, let's take this gold down here. Okay. There went my stem. That's okay, I'll find them later. Okay, what are we gonna do now? Hmm, I think I'm gonna come to my foreground with some lights. Come in here to my yellow. I'm gonna add a little white since it's nice and light in there. I'm gonna throw that down there. Ooh, can you see that? Can you see how rich and buttery this paint is? It's beautiful. I love it. Now, there isn't a reason in the world why I wouldn't choose this paint over any other paint. This is a fabulous paint. Let's see what else do I need. Oh, this is exciting. Good work. I could do this for hours. I could do this every day of my life. Love painting. Okay, got to go back to my apple. Going to put in some rich reds. Let's liven her up. Come on, apple. Wake up, apple. You got to be as live as that background. Let's put you in here. Okay, nice big swish here. And what else? I'm gonna go to the cat orange. I don't really need the oil. This is so rich. I don't really need to put any oil in this stroke. Whoa, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yes, we like her. She's looking healthy. She's looking happy. Too pretty to eat. Okay, let me put a little over here. And what else? I have, let me throw that away. I have my reflective light. I'm gonna brighten up my table so I can put in a little bit of light reflecting. I need a little bit of glow going up in there. So I'm gonna come over to my yellow and my green. I'm gonna lighten this up just, oops, that didn't do it. Do that again. And I'm gonna take some of this color. I'm gonna dull it down just a little bit because reflective light wouldn't be as bright as that table light. But it does go in the contour of the apple. Let me get it on there. I'm just noticing I'm turning my brush and I'm gonna drag that color in. And there it is. It's reflecting up into the apple. 
Okay, let's go over to the highlights and the warm light. I'm going to dip into, first I'm going to rinse my brush, get all that paint off there. Drag it across that paper towel. I don't want water in my paint. Now I'm going to go into this yellow and green combo area and just play with this color. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's lighten this up. Go a little cat orange. See, I could do this forever. But I'm going to now go for the highlight, which is white. And I'm going to place it right here. And there's my apple. Let me redo my stem, which I lost when I was doing the background, but that's easy enough. Come in here with that. Kind of a big old fat stem. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to narrow it down, and I'm going to add some light onto it so we can really see it. I'm going to add a little orange light this time. A little bit of a light. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just get rid of this green. Then I'm almost done. You know, I'm almost done with this painting. And But does that mean the painting's ready for delivery and sale? Not really. You know what you have to do to a painting when you're done? You have to varnish the painting. And the W Oil by Martin F. Weber offers you two varnish choices, which is really nice. And they're both non-toxic. I want to show those to you. Let's see, they're over here. This is the W Oil Matte Varnish. This is the W Oil Gloss Varnish. Now they both are wonderful varnishes. They're both non-toxic with the AP seal. And this is a traditional finish for oil, the gloss finish. But sometimes people don't want the gloss finish. They want a matte finish. One reason might be if you want to photograph your painting, sometimes the gloss kind of is hard to photograph. So that might be one reason. Another reason is maybe you just want it that way. So you have two choices, and I think that's great. And actually, you know what I found out? You could even use these on acrylics or traditional oil paints as well. So. Anyway, that about wraps it up for me, and I wanted to tell you thank you for joining me. I had a wonderful time, and I hope you get some time to paint. So go out and get yourself some paint by Martin F. Weber. Go get some of this W oil and try it out. It's guaranteed. They guarantee their paint. And I want you to go out and paint. You deserve it. And have a wonderful day.